Let's start with an easy but not so easy topic and one of my favorites. You know what? Energy is like magic. So the energy is hiding in the spring? Exactly. And when you let the car go, that potential energy transforms into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. The spring unwinds, the wheels turn, and your car zooms across the floor. But then why does it stop? Where does the energy go then? Ah, that's where energy puts on another costume. As the car moves, the wheels rub against the ground and that creates friction. The kinetic energy transforms into a thermal energy, heat. If you touch the wheels after the car has been running, they might feel just a tiny bit warmer. I can't really feel it, but that's so cool. So the energy is still there, just as heat now. You've got it. This is what scientists call the law of conservation of energy. Energy can never be created or destroyed. It just keeps changing from one form to another, like an actor changing costumes in a play. What other kinds of energy costumes are there? Oh, there are so many. Let me show you some right here in our backyard. See the water falling from my watering can? That's gravitational potential energy becoming kinetic energy. The chemicals in our compost pile? That's chemical energy waiting to help plants grow. And feel this warm sunshine on your face? That's radiant energy from the sun. Wow, energy is everywhere. But how do we measure it? Is there an energy ruler? Great question. Scientists measure energy in units called joules, named after a brilliant physicist. One joule is about the energy you use to lift a small apple one meter high. Like this? This is one joule? Exactly. But depending on what we are talking about, scientists use different units. For the food you eat, we use calories. For the electricity in our house, we use kilowatt hours. It's like using different measuring cups depending on whether you're measuring flour or milk. So my breakfast has energy too? Absolutely. Your breakfast gives you chemical energy that your body transforms into kinetic energy so you can run and play. And thermal energy to keep you warm. It's like putting fuel in a car so it can drive. This is amazing. But Grandpa, if energy never disappears, why do grow up always tell me to save energy? Why turn off the lights if the energy is still there? That's a very smart question, Mel. While energy is conserved in the universe, the problem is that some forms of energy are much more useful to us than others. What do you mean? Well, think of it like this. Electrical energy is like money in your piggy bank. Very organized and useful. But when we use electricity, it often ends up as heat that just spreads out into the air. That heat energy is still there, but it's like coins scattered all over the playground, much harder to collect and use again. Oh, so we want to keep our energy organized and useful. Exactly. When we say save energy, we really mean don't waste useful energy by turning it into less useful forms too quickly. Every time energy changes costumes, some of it becomes scattered heat that's hard to gather up again. So, when I win up my car toy, uh, I should make sure it doesn't waste energy by running into walls and things. That's right! And when we design machines, whether toy cars or real power plants, we try to make them as efficient as possible, so they waste as little useful energy as possible. So, can we make machines that don't waste any energy at all? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But physics has some rules, like the laws of thermodynamics. That say there will always be some energy that becomes scattered heat. 
It's like trying to eat soup without spilling a single drop. We can get very good at it, but perfect is nearly impossible. So, scientists are trying to spill less soup? That's a perfect way to put it. Scientists and engineers around the world are working every day to spill less soup, to make our energy transformations more efficient and less wasteful. I want to be an energy scientist when I grow up. I help make machines that hardly spill any soup at all. I think you would make a wonderful energy scientist, Mel. You already understand one of the most important concepts, that energy is always with us, just changing forms and waiting for clever people like you to find better ways to use it. <laughs>